Welcome to our Grade 11 CAT students or Computer Application Technology students. This video is going to go through the Phase 1 of your PAT. And this is, as I said, particularly for Grade 11s. And what I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to talk about how to get started with your Phase 1. I would suggest before you watch this video, if you haven't seen the, the, the topic discussion video, there's a link to it in the video description. So make sure that you watch that so you can see what the topic description is for your year. We are looking at the 2025 PAT, but hopefully this video will apply to future PATs if it stays in the same format. Throughout my videos for the grade 11s, what I'm going to try to do is try to focus on the things that are slightly different to grade 12. And where there is something that is similar to grade 12, I'm going to refer to the grade 12 video that can help you with that. And that's very important because we really want to be practicing in grade 11 how to do this pat properly so that when we get to grade 12, we know exactly what to do. So being able to do the grade 12 parts well in grade 11 is really going to help you score great marks in your final matric year. So let's go look at what we need to do for the phase one. So our first task is to create a folder structure. So they give you this sample, which is very similar to what you're going to have in grade 12. However, there are a couple of folders that are slightly different. Your phase three only has one folder where in grade 12, you'll have two folders for your phase three, one for your website and one for your report. So let's go and create this folder quickly. So as you can see the structure, you can just click on new or you can right click and go to new and click on new folder. There's lots of options to create a new folder. Now you're going to type in your surname and name. So um, Mr. Long, Long, Mr. And then you're going to say GR11 Pat. Now please double check with your teacher. They may have a different naming convention for the main folder. Maybe they want you to put the year in or something like that. So just double check with your teacher if that's what they want. Make sure that you get exactly how they want it to be done. And then inside this folder, we're going to create a phase one folder, a phase two folder and a phase three folder. So there are my three folders for the phases. Then let's go into the phase one folder and we need a folder for the saved sources and then for the actual document. So I'm going to make a folder called sources. As is pen, now I'm assuming they mean planning and summary document. So you can call it what you want. I'm going to call it my report because that's what we tend to use in grade 12. So this is where we'll put our Word document. That's going to be our report document and all of our sources, the PDFs of where we got our information from and our images and that we'll put in that sources folder. Then in the phase two folder, we are going to put these documents in. In grade 12, we have a folder for each of them. So let's have one for our questionnaire. Yeah, they say completed questionnaire is saved in a subfolder. If you're going to do it manually, then you might want to create a separate folder for that. But what I'm going to do is in that folder, if we use a Google form, I'll put a link to the Google form there and I will put a the spreadsheet that has all of the extracted responses in that folder as well. Then I have a folder for my spreadsheet. Then I'm going to have a folder for my database. And then I'm going to have a folder for my report. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be taking the report from phase one, pasting it into this folder for phase two, and then we're going to be adding stuff to it for the second phase. And then let's go to phase three. And this is simply a website. So if you want to create a folder for your website, we can create it just like that. So that's what I would do for your folder structure. Make sure it's nicely laid out. They don't mention anything about having individual folders for these parts, but I suggest that you do because that's what we're going to end up doing in grade 12. And again, make sure that your naming conventions are correct. Make sure that you name your folders nicely. Make sure that you name your files correctly so that they are suitable, that they're informative because there are marks for good file names and good folder names. Over here, they talk about keeping hard copies of any information that you can't get digital copies for. So I would suggest that you get electronic copies of everything where possible. Try to get sources that are in the internet. Or if you do end up getting from, for example, a book, then maybe taking a scanned copy of the pages from that book or that article if you're using that information. And same with your questionnaires. If you're going to give out your questionnaires physically, then I would scan them and keep them as electronic documents. It'll make your life a lot easier that you can keep referring to them. So that's task one done. What I would also do, it's not mentioned yet, but what I would strongly do is wherever you've got your PAT folder, I would create another folder called backup. And what I would do is whenever you're working on your PAT after a couple of days, I would go and copy your folders here. You just go and copy everything, copy. You go into your backup folder and you're going to paste it. And then you just rename it to the date. So 2025-07-19, for example. And then you work on the original pat and so on and so on. Within, after a couple more days, you're going to copy it, go back to your backup and paste it. 
and rename that to whatever date that is. So dash 07 dash 29, for example. So every couple of days that you've done a lot of work on your patch, make a copy of the original folder. Don't drag it, just copy and paste it in the backup folder so that if something goes wrong, you can always go back to a previous version of a particular document or particular folder just in case something gets corrupted or something goes wrong in your patch. At least you've got good backups then as well. I will then also put these on a flash drive somewhere so that you can have multiple copies of your patch not just on the school computer system, but also somewhere else, maybe keep a backup at home as well, just so that if something goes wrong, you've got multiple places where you can get your pet if you need to get a particular file or the whole thing. You don't want to find out after something's gone wrong that you have to restart your pet, that you, you want to go back to your previous backups if in the event of emergency. So don't forget to do that backup folder. Then task two, we need to create a planning and summary document. If you remember correctly, that'll be in our phase one and that'll be in our report document. And you can simply right click here, click on new and put in a new word document. Remember there are marks for naming conventions. So make sure that you name it correctly. You can call it your report, your phase one report. So we, I'm going to call this planning and summary document. And we're going to go into it. Now they ask us to add a cover page. I always like to put a break before I put in a cover page. I'm going to insert a page break. And then on the front page, just to I've got a bit of a gap, we can insert a cover page. You can pick whichever one you want. And they want to make sure that your name and surname, the name of the school, the subject name and the pet topic are included on your cover page. So you can go and change the color scheme. Make sure that you put your name in. Maybe you want the document title to, for example, be your pet topic. The subtitle you could maybe make as your subject name and then you must include the name of your school somewhere. So we can always add a field or add a text box and put in your school name. And I'll make sure that my box does not have an outline. So you could do something like that as well. So you can play around with that to create your cover page. Make sure that you've got all of those things in your cover page. Then we need to create the following headings. So there I've created the headings. I'm actually going to put this on the first page. So I'm going to come and put it over here because we will put our table of contents over here. But that's our table of contents. Our focus question, we will put our focus question over there, our task definition there. We will do the 10 questions over here. The summaries, we will just make the heading, but we won't put anything underneath it. That's where we're going to put the information that we get from our phase two. And then bibliography, then appendices. We're going to have two main appendices. We're going to have one which has the screenshot of your folder structure and one for the declaration of authenticity. You could probably include another one as an example of your survey or questionnaire. That would also not be a bad idea to have as an extra appendice. So you're going to make those as headings. So you're going to make sure that you create them as heading styles. So make sure you come over here. You must modify your heading one style to whatever you want it to be. So change the way it looks. I'm going to leave it like it is. You're going to select your text and you're going to make that heading one. And you're going to do the same for all of these. And I would make sure that you put each one on a brand new page. So put in a page break, change the heading. Then the next one, page break, put in the heading and so on. If you forgot how to do a page break, just remember to go insert page break as well. While we have here under appendices, we're going to create our addendum, which we'll call A, which will be our, our folder structure, which is technically a subheading. So you can make that a heading two. Again, right click on heading two, modify to be the way you want it to look. And then over here, you must put in a diagram or screenshot of your folder structure. So either you must come over here, take a screenshot of your folder structure to show it, or you can go and insert a smart art and create a folder structure that way using probably your hierarchy one, something along those lines to create or to show off your folder structure. You can do that as well. If you come to my channel, Admas Long RT and Cat, and you scroll down to the videos for the Cat Pat. So there are the Cat Pat tips. If you can't find it here, then go to playlist and find it there. If you come here to start in the document, this video goes through the grade 12 version of the document. It's very similar to what we've just done with the headings. But if you come to around about seven minutes into it, you'll see there's a video where we explain how to do the smart art for that. So obviously you will do it according to your folder structure, but that video can explain to you how to do that. And then we're going to insert another page break and have addendum B, which will be our declaration of authenticity. So we can write that in. Again, make that a subheading. So that means we're going to make it a heading two. 
So at the bottom of the PAT document, you will have this Appendix B, which shows you an example of this. You can print this out and fill it out and then scan it and put it into your document if you want. And then just over here, create a link to it. Or you can recreate this diagram. You can also come here to tinyurl.com slash catpat learn a declaration if you go to that address you'll come to this document which i've created for you and if you want you can just copy all of that content over there and under here you can paste it and there you'll have your own declaration that you can edit as you wish maybe making it a little bit smaller over here so you can fit everything in and you can put in your digital signature over there if you want and just fill out the details as you wish so you can do this if you want and that way you've got your declaration of authenticity so again, reminder, tinyurl.com slash declaration. You can copy that and paste it into your document. Then for task three is the focus question and task definition, which we will put under your two headings, focus question and task definition. Now just a reminder for grade 11, the slight change here, your focus question, you need to identify a focus area and change the focus question provided to clearly inform the reader of your focus for your investigation. So if you remember from this example, your focus question was this or that. So you had two options. So you choose which one you want, but you must adapt it to where you want to focus. Maybe changing the area or what type of technology or particularly for people buying particular items. So you need to adapt either one of those two questions and you just basically pick the one you like, copy it. You come to your focus question over here and you need to adapt it. You remember the focus question, you must amend appropriately. Include the focus area, area chosen is researchable. So you need to include the focus area. So maybe the impact of technology on career services, for example, maybe you wanna focus on items that are particularly pertain to clothing. So you could say for the clothing industry, and you can say in South Africa, you could say for teenagers buying online. So now you've changed it slightly to include a particular area and for who your target audience is. So doing slight changes like that can amend your focus question so that you can not all have the same question, but you've still picked a focus area, and but you've adapted it to where you want to put your focus on. Maybe you want to focus on people that are getting items from overseas companies like Shimu, I mean Timu or Shein, for example. So you adapt it to your scenario, to what you want to focus on. And that's your focus question. Then for the task definition is you're going to answer these four questions. You can literally copy and paste it. So those are your four questions that you need to answer. Again, if you go to my YouTube channel, to the cat pat tips, and you go across to writing your task definition. I've got a whole video on it that explains how to write out these particular things. The only thing that might be slightly different is how you go about conducting the investigation because there we are basically telling them the different steps that you're doing for your pet. And the only big difference between grade 12 and grade 11 is that you will not be doing a report in the phase three. So it's literally will be exactly the same as what you are doing. The only slight changes will be that you are not doing a report in phase three. So you're just gonna be saying, you're going to be presenting your findings and information in a website. And just also take note that for your database, we'll say that you have been given information in a database. Because remember, in grade 11, they give you a database to edit, where in grade 12, you have to create your own database. So it follows exactly the same as what is mentioned in that video, writing your task definition. The only changes will be the third question. You'll be mentioning that you will have received a database that you are going to edit to get inf extract information from. And in your phase three, you are going to write a summary or your findings are going to be presented in a website. You're not going to make any mention of a report over there. So if you follow that video, it'll tell you everything you need to know for the task definition. And then task four will be the questions that you need to ask yourself to guide you for your investigation. That'll be done under questions over here. So you need to create 10 questions where you talk about the category of the question, what the question is, the level, the type of source, the bibliography, the quality, and the summary. This is where majority of your marks are gonna come from. And you'll see that task five will be finding the sources for this information. Task six is getting recordings of that information. Everything related to the questions can be found in the cat pad tips. There is setting up your 10 questions. This is going to help you set up the layout of your questions. Just take note that in the grade 12 pad, we put this in the addendum. You are going to be placing it in your questions section of your document. 
And then this is a video about how to research your 10 questions. Just take note, you don't have to research as many because if you remember, they give you a whole bunch of questions depending on which field you focused on. So for example, over here, you're allowed to choose eight of the questions. So if I chose this as the topic for my focus question, then I can choose at least eight from here, but you have to come up with two of your own. So this video will help you find those two that you still need to find. Here are some more tips about how to find those research questions. This is the most difficult part of your phase one, finding the information. Once you've got everything, then it's easy. It's just putting everything together. So really spend a lot of time watching those two videos so that you know what to do. And don't forget that you've got access to these links as well to find information. I give you all the tips you need for that. And then you're going to have to talk about how to fill out the 10 questions, which I've got a video for that. Then how to fill out the source details. Even though you can't see, there are more videos. I'm going to click on play all. And if you scroll down the list of here, you can see they're setting up your 10 questions. Research, that's what we spoke about, how to fill in the 10 questions. Here's the video to tell you how to find your source details. Task 5 is asking for that. How did you get your source information? All of task 5 can be done exactly like it is in grade 12. You can do fill in your source details. Then you need to evaluate the quality of your sources, which is exactly what we're doing as part of this task as well. So all of this can be done using that video and then completing the summary section, which is this part over here. So those videos will really help you with the 10 questions and you'll find that it's very similar in grade 12. So make sure that you follow those videos exactly like it is and you can get maximize those marks. Task 7, you should have your folder structure, you should have your one pro word processing document. Just make sure that you've completed all the instructions, that you correct any mistakes and just double check everything before handing in your phase 1. Just a reminder that all of your sources, for example, the documents that you found information from, you're going to save in the sources folder. But again, those videos are really going to help you from the YouTube channel. So just to recap, I showed you how to create your folder structure. I showed you how to make a cover page and the headings and to make those two addendums. I spoke about the focus question, but the task definition and task four, five and six, you can get from the playlist. If you go look at it, just a reminder, in starting the document, I did speak about how to create the addendum, which is about seven minutes into writing a task definition. That's going to help you a lot for the task definition part. You're going to just adapt your own focus question, but you can watch that if you want. But then setting up your 10 questions, researching them, some help with that research. Fill in the 10 questions, fill in the source details, evaluate the quality of the sources, complete the summary. All of those are going to be very important for you to complete task four, five and six. I will put links to those videos in the video description so that you can just click on them and go from there. But that's all you need basically as a summary of what to do for your phase one. So get stuck into it now, good luck. And I hope you can get all the marks for your phase one. Good luck, grade 11s. If you want further help with other phases, you know, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel at Mr. Long IT and Cat so you don't miss when we post those videos as well as on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.